Hello there. I hope you're doing well today. My name is Dr. Katherine Garforth and today I have the pleasure of talking to Dr. Jennifer Buckingham. Today we're going to be speaking about orthographic mapping. Um, just because this fits in, someone sent a question about what strategies can you use for a child who's having deficits in their orthographic processing? Like how can you strengthen going from that decoding student to the one that can have that word mapped orthographically? It's hard to answer that without knowing which, which aspect of the orthographic processing is um, presenting the problem. Um, is it the blending? Um, is it the, the fluency so that being able to say the word automatically when they see it? Can, is it, um, sometimes for some ch children, it's a, a problem with rapid automatized naming. Mm -hmm. um, and that can be very difficult to remediate. That is, that's something that um, there is no kind of intervention. There's no RAN intervention. Um, you can work with it once you've identified that that might be an underlying cause, but there's no easy answer for that. If it's that the, um, the GPC knowledge isn't solid, then it's just, you know, learning some children need m many more exposures to GPCs, much more practice in blending um, than others. So they're just two possibilities, but there are numerous. So it's really, I guess the first step is trying to isolate what, what's, what's the sub-skill that's causing the problem. Definitely. And when, you know, when students increase in their fluency, they it take less and less time to orthographically map a word. So once the reader becomes more competent, it's, you know, one to four exposures that they need to map it. Whereas some readers to get to that level need to read it a hundred times or even a couple hundred times before it's actually mapped. And it's just giving them that repeated practice. Yeah. To get there. Yeah, agree.